Welcome, everyone. Welcome to MOMOL 2023. We're super excited to have everyone here in Montreal. I hope you had a great flight or road trip to come in. And we have very nice weather for everyone to enjoy. Uh, so please don't forget to go walk by the old port or something and grab an ice cream. Um, first, let me start by an introduction about who, who I am. My name is Dominique Biaini, and uh, I am a lead researcher at, uh, Valence, at Valence, now Recursion, um, and also an adjunct professor at the University of Montreal and associate member at Mila. Um, so this conference today was organized by the people from Mila and the M2D2 community. So what is Mila? Well, everyone here is at Mila because it's a very exciting place. Uh, more than a thousand researchers in Montreal at Mila work on AI and not, not only on AI, but on AI for good, uh, which implies also health applications and material applications that will be discussed today at the conference. And the M2D2 community, which is a, an online community, bigger than Mila, but it's online, so it doesn't count. Uh, it's 1,500 people in the community working on molecular machine learning. Uh, so we'd be very excited if you can join this, um, uh, this community and participate. Uh, and uh, that community also holds like weekly talks where you can have the same quality of talks that we have here, but at, on a weekly basis. Uh, so it's a great way to stay in touch with the latest updates in the field. So last year, MOMO 2022 was held in Boston at MIT. And it was a really great experience. Lots of speakers, lots of people from all, all around the world. Uh, it was like a, an amazing experience for, for me. And the fact that we can bring MOMO 2023 here in Montreal, uh, it's also even more amazing. Uh, today, when I look at the room, I see people from industry, top players in the field, in industry and in academia. Uh, very excited to see both student and senior people being here. And um, the lineup of speakers, like um, I'm based because uh, I have organized this, but I, I'm amazed by the lineup of speakers that, that are here today. So I hope that you enjoy the, their talks. Um, and um, so unfortunately, uh, this weekend marks the one year anniversary of uh, the passing of uh, Octavian. Ghania, which was one of the most important figure in the field of uh, drug discovery, um, of ML for drug discovery in Boston. And this conference today is uh, made in his memory. So I would like to, um, to have just a few seconds of silence to remember him. Uh, he was a great mentor and a great friend to many of the people here in the room. So let's have uh, a few moments of silence for him. Thank you everyone for this. Um, we really wish that he could make it today. Um, So uh, today, I would like to thank our sponsors that are here um, and uh, ma many industries and companies contributed to make the conference happen today and to allow, for example, uh, students to, uh, to come here for free uh, and to allow us to pay for lunch for everyone. And these companies are uh, Valence, uh, Graphcore, Ventus Therapeutics, University of Montreal and Pfizer. Uh, some of these companies have posters where you can go talk with them or boot in that part of the room. Uh, so please feel free to, to go discuss with them. Um, and I would like to thank the professor organizers of the conference uh, that allowed this to happen. So Professor Joshua Benjo and Professor Jian Tang, which are two of the most uh, involved professors in the field of molecular machine learning at Mila. Um, 
and Professor uh, Regina Berzilai and Tommy Giacola, which uh, organized the conference last year and were involved uh, in the conference today. And with this in mind, uh, I will let uh, Professor Joshua Benjo, who is also director of MILA, uh, Turing, uh, Turing Award winner, uh, to give a few minutes of, uh, of welcoming notes. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Um, and uh, welcome everyone to Montreal. Um, Montreal is uh, amazing in the spring um, because of the contrast <laughs> with the winter. And uh, it's a different feeling than in other places where it's sunny and warm all, all year. Um, so here, as Dominic was saying, we, we have an amazing community of machine learning people. and. In the last few years, the connection between machine learning and scientific discoveries in, in chemistry and biology, uh, physics, um, and other fields, including climate science, um, has been growing a lot in, in our ranks. Um, this idea, as Dominic was saying, that we can and should apply machine learning in areas where um, <clears throat> you know, there are really important challenges for humanity, like, like uh, drug discovery or discovering new materials to help us fight climate change, or you know, uh, <clears throat> being better prepared for uh, future pandemics, um, antimicrobial resistance, and, and all these things is, um, is something that is motivating a lot of us and a lot of students in particular. Now, in addition to this, one reason why I got into uh, these questions and, and molecular machine learning in the last few years is that it's bringing uh, amazingly interesting challenges from a machine learning perspective as well. So <clears throat> my students, um, <clears throat> they, they're computer scientists and they, they want to push forward the field of, uh, of machine learning and they are, uh, questions in, in machine learning that we don't know yet how to answer satisfactorily that really uh, matter in these applications. So they are kind of forcing us to, to push uh, that boundary. And to be a little bit more precise about this and kind of giving you a glimpse of the kind of questions my group is working on, um, we were thinking about in coming years, you know, think like a five-year horizon maybe more because there are maybe challenges we don't see yet, um, going towards AI systems that behave in a way similar to, to human scientists. So uh, understanding the process of science um, um, and <clears throat> first decomposing into the understanding part, coming up with theories that explain the data in a, actually in, in a Bayesian way, and then using that in order to design experiments and uh, using some kind of active learning in order to be really efficient at extracting information from experiments or from uh, calculations that are expensive like DFT, I think is just the beginning of something bigger where um, we're gonna see um, AI systems that, that not only become uh, like numerical tools, like, you know, we maybe today that's how we think of these things, but actually uh, eventually like peers uh, to help us understand the world and, and address some of the biggest challenges of, of humanity. So with this, uh, thank you very much for being here and enjoy the conference. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Joshua. So he will uh, also be part of the panel later today. So he'll, um, he'll be able to expand more on all the, the exciting ideas that he was discussing about active learning and uh, exploring the space of uh, molecules. Um, so I would also like to thank the people from Mila that allowed to, to organize this. So um, employees of Mila, such as uh, Joel, Charles, Laurent, Mariam, Carl, and Anne-Sophie, uh, some of them who are here today that allowed to make this happen. 
And also, of course, Charles in the back who does all the audio and video. Um, I would also like to thank all of all of the the sorry it's Carl in the back I, I messed up. Um, I would like also to thank all of the students, uh, mostly from Mila, who helped uh, make this day happen. Uh, also, um, most of them I saw today uh, here at the entrance allowed us to review papers, uh, to contact, uh, uh, like to to make the schedule and organize the entire event. So thanks a lot. Uh, and I will go walk through the schedule of the day very quickly, but the schedule, the detailed schedule is online uh, for you to access it. So uh, in, the, in the morning, we have um, almost two hours of talk before going into the poster session and then into the panel about the future of AI for molecule discovery. Then we'll have a lunch break and in the afternoon, we follow with uh, two talks, a poster session and the last two talks of the day. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, you can find everything online. About the logistic, I told you already um, that M2D2 is uh, uh, part of the organization committee of the conference today. Uh, what is M2D2? It's a Slack channel and a YouTube channel uh, about like the recent papers and the recent works that get released in the field. Uh, if you join the, the Slack, we have created a new channel uh, called MomoConf2023, which allows you to talk with the speakers here today or with other people that are in the room today about anything, uh, about grabbing a beer after the conference or questions about the presentations, whatever you prefer. And uh, if you have any question throughout the day, feel free to talk directly to me or to Johnny. Uh, Johnny, are you there? Say hello to the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> so Johnny has been uh, the mastermind behind uh, most of the, the things that happened. Thanks a lot, Johnny, for your help. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and a few details about, about the day. Uh, there is foods, drinks, and snacks served in that corner throughout the day. Uh, lunch will be served at noon as well. Uh, the boots for the uh, for the sponsors will be there. The bathroom is right here, like when you exit the room on uh, on your right. Uh, good luck making the water fountain work. Yeah. You have to use your feet to make the water go up. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think I think that's it. So with that in mind, again, I'd like to thank everyone in the audience and everyone who made this day happen. And we'll start with the first speaker, Mohamed Al-Kraishi, who will talk about OpenFold. <laughs> 